Well, how's everybody doing today? How's everybody doing today? Drams on deck. Today, we got something very, very special. Today, this is my 100th review. This is my 100th video. And today, I have something special that I want to share. I know we look at this McAllen Rarecast, but today is not your day. So it's not about you today. It's not about you today. Okay. Even though I'm looking at it, you look good. This is coming soon, but no, no, no. It's not about you. But today, I've got a hundredth episode, so I got to do something big. I was thinking about what can I do? What can I do? And I told you in my previous video, I'm going to bring you what you want. So this is what I'm going to do for y'all. I'm going to do today, I'm going to do two double reviews. So one review is this going to be right here. We're going to have a head to head matchup. You see it, and you see it right here. Bam! McAllen edition number six going head to head with his brother, McAllen Classic Cut. Yes, sir. This is 2019 Classic Cut. Yes, sir. This is a Sherry Bomb versus another Sherry Bomb. Uh, sitting at just under 53% alcohol. We got the Sherry cast right here from McAllen. And all this versus this this release just not too long ago in 2020. McAllen Edition 6 is actually one of my favorite in the 1 through 6 staple. This one is the last edition of the series, 48.6%. We're going to do head to head. I love both of these. These are both Sherry Drams. And people who know my channel know I love my Sherry Bombs. So today... For the hundredth video, I'm going head to head. So we're gonna have the Mac Sherry, we, both of them are Sherry. We're gonna do the the classic cut versus Mac Six. This is gonna be the co-main event. So this is what it is. So we're gonna have two head to head. So this is the first one. This is the co-main event. But as promised in the main event, I promised you I was gonna give it to you. Bow. Here it is, right there. The Red Breast 27. Yes, it is. It is here. It is time. The wait is over. You see it. You see it. Irish whiskey at its best. I mean, this is this is Irish premium Irish whiskey. Yes, sir. You see it. This is 27 years old. It's bottling bourbon cast. It's bottling sherry cast and bottling port cast. Look, it opens up so sexy. Look at it. Just wow. Mm-hmm. Has a nice little matic top. Slide this one out. And the bottle just comes right out like so. Ba ba. Very nice. Almost like a, a color of a, like a dark Twizzler or something like that. But this is the bottle. Cash strength. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And this one's going ahead against another Irish whiskey titan. If you don't know, now you know. I'm going to put this bottle. I'm going I'm to show this bottle some love and put it on notes because I don't think it's beginning its proper shine. Most people don't even know about it. So unless you are a straight whiskey head, you really wouldn't even know nothing about this. But that's what we're here for. We're here to share, share uh, ideas and learn. And we're going to do it right here. So this right here is by Melton Dark Garlic. This is by uh, Middleton. This one right here is a nice one. I mean, look at look look at the bottle. Look at the box. I mean, ah, we're gonna get all up in it. This right here is a fruit beast. This right here is a fruit beast. This is the main event right here. So we got the Middleton Dark Garlic. We got it going head to head with the Red Breast 27. Wow! I love the inside of the box. Well, look at this. Just just beautiful. Look at it. It is really nice. Hard handcrafted. Has a little pamphlet on the side. It really is a nice, nice bottle. So these, I would say, hands down, are the most fruit influenced whiskeys that I have ever had to date. Strictly fruit. These two is the Clash of the Titans, head to head, twenty seven. So we got this twenty seven years versus this is non age statement. And the and the uh, co main event we got Mac versus Mac. So this is gonna be a slobber knocker in the words of Jr. So we are gonna get it cracking right now. Hundred episode Dram Zone deck. Let's go. What's going on, baby? We back at it. Drams on deck. As you see, I'm in my zone. I'm on my vibe. My 100th review, my 100th video is here, finally. So thank y'all for y'all support. Thank y'all for watching. And we here. Now, Alexa, stop. I was getting my groove on, y'all. But anyway, so this is it, man. This is my 100th one. I, I am very, very happy. I'm blessed. I'm grateful to be doing this. This is fun for me. You know, I never thought I'd be doing this for what two years now. So my hundredth uh, episode, and I'm happy that be sharing that with y'all. So look at the day as a celebration. Like we gonna have fun today. Think of like we're gonna have a little party, as I like to say. I mean, we gonna drink, we gonna sit, we gonna politic. You can give me some of your comments, and I'll give you some of my thoughts on these. But as I said earlier, we gonna have two head to heads. We got the Mac Six Edition Six versus the Mac Classic Cut 2019. This first up, this is the co-main event. But the main event, as I said earlier, these two bad boys right here. Ooh, ooh, 
We got the middle 10. And we got the red breast 27. Yes, sir. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Right here and right here. Uh, these are two fruit beasts. And they not cheap either. We're going to get all into that when they time comes. But first up, we got this right here. So, again, man, thank you all for your love, your support. Man, this has been a great day. And like I said, I, I, I feel blessed to be happy the opportunity to do this. So, I'm going to share it with you all. I'm feeling very punchy today. I got the red breast. I got my red Versace robe. I'm feeling very comfortable. We got the MAC. So, you know, let's do what we came here to do. Now, those of y'all who know me, I get very excited about good dreams. I really do. So what does that mean to you? That means I'm going to be talking a lot. I'm going to run my damn mouth. So I'm going to do two head to head. So it's probably going to be probably close to an hour long. So I'm going to let y'all know now that, you know, some of y'all going to be like, yo, you know, I'm going to tell y'all if you don't have nothing to do, you know, you got nowhere to be, pull up a drink right now while I'm pulling up my drink and you can sip and watch me talking. It's almost like we're drinking together. We're just doing it virtually. But then again, there's going to be some of y'all who got things to do, like drams. I really want to stay with y'all. I got to go to work. I got things to do. I can't stay for a whole time. So don't worry. I got you too. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to put a little in the comment box. I'm going to put a timestamp so you can go ahead and get to the meat and potatoes. So if you just want to get to the nosing, the tasting, and the scoring of this or the second, or I would say the main event, then I, I'm hit, be sure I'm going to take care of you. So in the, just be sure to hit the description box. Description box, I'm gonna timestamp it for you. So you, you gotta just want to get in, get your little information, get the hell on. That's fine. No, no, you know what I'm saying? No problem whatsoever. I'll be sure to timestamp that for you so you can just skim through to get what you gotta get to. And you can be on your way. Get your nuggets and be on your way. But those of you who ain't got Friday, it's Friday, and you ain't got another damn thing to do, then just chill with your boy. Pull up your drink, my drink, and we're gonna have a good time. So either way, thank y'all again, man. Hundredth review. I'm really, really happy for this, man. I'm excited. So I'm going to share that with y'all. So let's go ahead and get this situation started. So let's go ahead and do what we came here to do. So I'm going to start off with this right here. We got the Max 6 versus the Classic Cut. These are both sherry drams. This one right here is a mix of seasoned sherry, European and uh, uh, American oak uh, sherry cast. And this is right here, pretty much similar. And the ABVs are pretty close too. As you can see here, the Max 6. This one right here is the last edition, 48.6% alcohol. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And this is the very last one. This is the uh, uh, blue colored one. And that one right here, I got this one about a couple months ago. This is the box that comes in. This is pretty much paying homage to the river. I think it's the uh, uh, River Spay that's pretty much uh, in, outside of the distillery. And this is paying homage to it, but it still has obviously the McAllen uh, uh, pretty much makeups of it. So, you know, classic six pillars of McAllen is still here. So this is the box. This one was the most expensive, obviously, retail-wise, because I think the normal uh, editions were like in a ballpark of 100 to 120. This one was 160. So I paid 160 for the Max 6. And this is showing you this right here, classic cut, 2019. This one right here is cash strength. 50, just, a chat, just a tad under 53%. This is the box that it comes in, McAllen. Nice red box. It goes with my fit. And this is the box right here. I like it. So anyway, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to see which one I like better. This one I got a couple months ago. As well. I actually got these exact same day. And this one I paid about $100 or $110 for the, for the um, Classic Cut. And again, $160 for the um, Max 6. So they're both Sherry's. Uh, they're both McAllen. So I'm going to try them individually. Tell, me, tell you my opinion about it. And this will philosophize. So I'm going to start with this uh, Mac Classic Cut. I'm going to nose it, taste it, and score it. Let's go. Now, show you the color right here. It has a very nice, I would say medium complexion of amber. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Nice little syrupy uh, look. It doesn't look super thick because I'm not seeing a whole lot of legs on there. It's a non-age statement, so I don't know how long, how old it is. It's probably a mixture of different uh, age whiskeys. But it doesn't look very oily. It doesn't look very viscous. But it's very aromatic. You can, it has like if you are a McAllen fan, it definitely carries the McAllen uh, features. You know what I'm saying? That classic McAllen smell. Like if you're a Mac guy, you know what I'm talking about. It's that classic Mac smell. So when I put my nose in, it smells like a straight, sophisticated sherry bomb. That's what it smells like. Ginger, some like some cloves, some kind of spice, and obviously sherry, like a sherry wine. And it has, like I said, it has some punch to it. It's 53%. So you feel a little, you smell a little bit of alcohol, but it's very, very nice. It's not like overly aggressive, not, you know, overly punchy. It's not burning your nose. So 
Oh yeah, you definitely pick up. I definitely pick up some ginger, sherry, <sighs> mm -hmm. spice. Very nice, like a nice sophisticated wine. That's what I smell. Very nice, and the colors is pretty similar. I, I mean, honestly, looking at, it, I can't really tell the colors apart. So you probably from the uh, light you can't tell, but they're. FYI, the colors are pretty close. I can't tell them apart. So that's why I keep one on this side and one on the other side. But uh, for the MAC Classic Cut, let's see what this palette's talking about. Let's go. Felt that one. Ah, all right now. Ah, that first one normally gets me sensitized because the ABV seek, seeking am is kind of like priming my palate, I call it. But now that it's doing that, the heat's kind of absorbing into it. It's kind of airing out a little bit. So first sip opens me up. Second one, I like to saturate my palate so I can really get the flavors deeper in me. So. That being said, the second sip, plastic cut, let's go. Mm. Really? Mm. That's a good one right there. Mm. So, definitely pick up the sherry bomb. It's, sherry is definitely prevalent. Has has like I said, fifty three percent pretty much. So it's gonna have a kick to it. It's a nice kick though. For those who are used to drinking, you know, cash strength, I think it's a nice, pleasant uh, ABV. You know, if you're not used to drinking cash strength, you're not used to drinking neat. It may be kind of strong for you because I remember years ago. I'm, I I remember I had bought this the twenty seventeen version. So that was like four years ago. And at that time, I wasn't drinking too much cash strength. Normally, I would put more water in it at that time than now. So I, over the years, I've learned to train my palate to be able to, to be used to taking cash strength. So if you're not used to drinking cash strength or high ABV, you just jump right into the deep end without you know working up your way to it. It may be all putting a hot to you like OMG. It, you may not like it as much. So I always say when you have ABV, the good thing about it, you can always bring it down to what's comfortable for you. So if you always try it neat first, if you're not used to drinking AB, high ABV, I would say take a very small sip, so that way it won't be as hot. Swirl it around, and then once you, once you, you get your palate gets used to the heat, then it gets a little bit easier. Sort of like when you mouthwash in the morning, how you know you wake up, you swirl around some Listerine is really hot, is you know it burns a little bit. But if you was to spit it out and take another sip of it, it wouldn't burn as much. So same way with this. So anyway, uh, this one was good. So you get a lot it's similar to. The nose is what you get on the palate. It's a sherry bomb all day. I love the ABV because I still, I took the last sip probably about a minute ago and I still taste it. Ginger, clove, a little bit of orange. I get some spice on it, like a cinnamon or something. And it's in there. It is nice, balanced. It's classic McAllen all the way. If you a sherry guy, you need to try this because the 2019 is on and popping. Um, I don't even think it needs water personally. I'm not going to put any water in it. But I have, that's why I have tried it with and without water. It's very similar. I don't put very, uh, but very little water. So to me, it doesn't really change it that much. Um, but one of the answers that I did know is that it's maybe slightly sweeter, but it's not much because I don't put that much water. So if you, to one person who, who you know, uh, saturates your spirits with a little bit more water, it may be a totally com a different complexity, but I don't want to do that. I like, I like just drinking it the way it was meant to be. I like drinking neat. So that being said, this one right here is only popping uh, for a sherry dram. It's it, it is in there. Like if you one more sip, let me take one more sip. Mm. Nice balance. Mm. I get a lot of spice on here. Like I mean, that cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves is, is I mean, it's really heavy on there. With that sherry, that ginger influence, it is is a nice, very nice. If you a sherry guy, you're in your world. As I was saying, uh, for me, um, this is a bomb sherry. Like I said, I will say that 
it's it, it's it's pretty much a sherry forward um dram so if you're looking for something uh you know far outside of sherry like there's not gonna be no smoke no oak no not really oak on here so it is, is a, what you would call contemporary but still nice uh sherry dram I mean that's not gonna be overly complex but it but what it is is a nice uh sherry dram and it has uh, a multitude of different uh sweetness to it and I think those who are sherry people will appreciate that that being said, uh, $110, 2019, 20, uh, I personally, because I love Sherry, I would give this a solid eight and a half all day long. And I can tell you too, I'm, I'm pretty much leaning towards a nine, be honest with you, because I, like I said, I, I'm a Sherry version, so I'm pretty much going to lean towards a nine on this one. I, I really do think that it's, it's a bomb drown. I love my Sherry's, and it, it lingers. And to me, the flavors are consistent from front to end. So uh, like I said, the Sherry, the cloves, the ginger, um, those spices is from front to end is, 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 doesn't really, uh, change from the front, uh, from the, uh, entry level to the, to the goes down the hatch. The flavors are pretty much the same. So for me, uh, I give this, I'm pretty much, uh, man, this is, I really enjoy this, man. I, I'm, I'm stuck between an eight and a half and nine, but I'm going to give it a nine just because I love the, the, the finish. I love the sherry. So I'm going to give this pretty much a nine out of a 10. And that's, I'm incorporating everything. I'm not going to deduct it or add any, you know, for price availability it is pretty, I think it's relatively priced. I mean, it's not an age statement. If I had to knock it, I, you know, but McAllen's, so most McAllen's are going to come with a nice price tag. So I'm really going to knock it. I'm, I'm going to leave it the way it is. I would give this a solid, uh, I would give this, man, I, like I said, I'm a Sherry guy. So maybe I'm a little biased, but I'll give it a nine out of a 10, man. It's, it's, it's in there. I mean. I really enjoy this. This is in there. I like I said, it it, it hits the bill for me. Uh, for those who who if you like that that wheelhouse that sherry, you would definitely enjoy this. Higher ABV, lingers long, spices, is hits the bill for me. That being said, we're gonna jump over here to this Mac Six. Check the color on this bad boy right here. It is in there. It's pretty much similar color as, as I just showed you with the classic cut. Um, like I like I said, medium amber brown color. Um, I don't see a super oily. This is non age statement as well. Uh, like I said, it's a mixture pretty much of uh, sherry seasoned cask, non age statement, six uh, and last edition. And this is actually one of my uh, favorites in the wild because the fifth edition, uh, which was color, uh, and the fourth one, which was uh, came in a green uh, bottle, and that was more focused on sherry. I actually like the six more. So, this is actually the first edition I really, really like since the third one. I think one. Three and six are my favorites of the uh, of the edition series. So four and five was that was okay, but it, I mean I wasn't wild by it. And it's, it's been so long since I had the second one, I really can't even give you my eyes a pain of it. Um, but the one, three, and six are definitely stand out. So FYI. So uh, on the nose, this one right here. It doesn't, it isn't, uh, it's not as uh, aromatic as the, uh, the classic cut. Now this one right here, I pick up some sherry influence, a little bit of spice, like maybe, uh, cloves or some cinnamon or something like that. I'm not picking up uh, a strong wood presence or oak or anything like that. Mostly just sherry and some spice is what I'm picking up. Uh, even though it's only what, 4% uh, percent ABV difference, um, on the nose, I will say that the classic cut seemed to be more aromatic and more, more lovely on the nose than this one. Not saying it's not as nice, but it, it doesn't, it's not as strong. I don't detect as many um, flavors on the nose as I do on this one, but that's just the nose. But yeah, you definitely pick up sherry, spice, some sweetness. Like I said, like I could also pick up a little bit of honey. It smells like a little bit of honey, some sweet nectar. That's what I'm picking up now. Nice though. Now, I'm not here. For, I don't really buy whiskey to, to smell it. I buy it to drink. So that being said, let's put this down the hatch and let's see what we got. This is in there too. I will say, 
the palate is a little bit more enhanced for me than my nose. Maybe my palate is more developed than my nose is. Maybe we'll just say that, but, but yeah, the first sip, it didn't, it didn't run as quite as high, but again, this is my first sip. So, but it doesn't seem quite as hot, even though it's 4% difference. Let me take another sip of this. Let my saturate my palate a little bit more. And I can get you an answer. That's in there. I pick up sherry. Pick up a little sweet oak, that spice like the cinnamon. And I pick up a little bit, like a little, almost like a like a gingerbread kind of a of a flavor on here as well. Very nice, almost like a nice sweet cookie or something. So like the gingerbread, sherry, sweet oak, and that spice, like I said, that cinnamon, all rolls together. All in all, it is, a, it is a nice dram too. And you pick up sherry, but I will say to me, the sherry on this classic cut seems to be more concentrated. Almost like, this almost seems like a wine. When I sip it, the sherry almost seems like wine-ish. This one, that, the, the uh, sherry influence the, to me is not as pronounced in the Max 6 as it is in the classic cut. So I would say, so I wouldn't call this a sherry bomb but a, a, a sherry flavor. This, what I would call pretty much a sherry bomb. So that's the difference. Uh, it still has a multitude of different flavors. So it's just a matter of uh, how much sherry do you like. I like them both. Um, so this one, like I said, th this one here is definitely, is it tastes it's just a little bit hotter and you definitely pick up more of a, of the sherry influence. Um, I like them both. I'm gonna take, that being said, let me take this one last sip right here. This one last sip. Sherry, that cinnamon spice, that cookie, sweet gingerbread type of thing. Well, I would say uh, there's a little bit of that sweet oak, sweet oak. But like I said, the sherry is 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 there, but it's definitely not. The sherry way more turned up on this one. I think that's the main difference on this one. You can definitely tell that the sherry is more turned up. Um, so, Max 6, uh, 1 to 10, 10 being the best for me. I will give the, the Mac McAllen edition number six an 8.5 out of a 10. It is a very good dram as well. It's solid. Uh, I think they did a good job on this one. Uh, I think it's better, like I said, as I spoke earlier, I think I liked it. Me personally, I liked it more than the four and the five. Um, others may you know, have a, uh, their favorites that they may like a, or more than others. But to me, they, they did definitely a good job. With it. I enjoyed it so much that I had, I had bought a couple other uh, uh, backups just to keep it so when it runs out but uh, all in all both solid drams this one share this one sh is more turned up on the sherry i think that's what did it for me it's I, it almost it feels like i'm i'm sipping almost like a sherry wine almost a little bit more on this one it's more turned up um but if you if some people who may not like sherry bomb they may like sherry but they don't want a sherry bomb so if you if you don't want it more turned up i would say you may lean towards the six you can hey it's a win-win either way but personally Nine out of a ten uh, for the uh, classic cut 2019, and I'll give the McAllen edition six an 8.5 out of a ten. Um, this was 160, that was like around 110. Um, so there is a you know um, a, a significant difference in pricing. I think they're both pr relatively available still. So I would say that in the in the next three or four years, the McAllen six is going to be uh, hunt, you know, be worth two three hundred dollars just like its uh, previous other releases. Especially like the Mac, uh, Mac, uh, McAllen Edition One and Two are like, especially the Mac One. If you if you can see it online, it's well over a thousand dollars. So which is preposterous. I remember I got it. I got the uh, McAllen Edition Six right before the Edition Two came out, and I paid a hundred dollars for it. I was living in uh, Pennsylvania at the time, so it's state regulated. So you don't you don't have to worry about second market prices in certain states. Pennsylvania being one of them. Um, but anyway, um, I, I like them both. Uh, to me. The classic cut is a little bit better for me. That's for my personal preference. But um, but yeah, that's that, man. 
Uh, so we got the co-main event. To me, they're both winners. But my personal preference would be the classic cut 2019 for dreams. Now that we got that out of the way, in the words of Bruce Buffer, let's get ready to rumble because now we got the big dogs. Now, in my opinion, I, I, I love all spirits. I think Scotch, if you ask me what's my favorite, I probably would think Scotch would probably be my favorite uh, spirit, even above tequila, cognac, uh, bourbon, just because I think that is a little bit more complexity in flavors. You can get smoky Scotch, sweet Scotch, and everything in between. I think the flavor range to me is way more developed personally, in my opinion, for scotch than you than it is for any other spirit. I mean, scotch uses bourbon barrels, all kinds of things. So I just, that's just my personal preference. It's, it's not a right or wrong. It's just my opinion. But, it, but that being said, I enjoy all spirits. I don't give a damn what it is. If it's good, it's good. I don't care if it's from Montana, if it's from Kentucky, you know, if it's from Colorado, if it's from Spain. Uh, it could be from Irish, it could be Japanese, it could be Taiwan, Scotland, doesn't matter. Good, A good dram is a good dram, period. So, I actually started getting the Irish whiskey maybe last two years. And, you know, for the most part, um, I, there, I think that Scotch is still a cut above Irish whiskeys. But I will say there are a handful of brands in Irish whiskey that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any spirit in any even top-notch Scotches. That being said, I introduce you to the Redbreast 27. This, in my opinion, is one of these, well, Redbreast in general, but I actually reviewed the Cash Strength, which is another one, check that out. But Redbreast is a, is a brand of Irish whiskey that to me have put out great stellar products and can contend with the big boy Scotch. And I introduce you to the Milton, the Air Garlic. Now, I actually, if I'm, I don't pronounce it right, but I call it the uh, Dare Garlic uh, Knockrath. And this right here is a very interesting beast in itself. I'm going to dig into it, but I'm going we're going to switch these out real quick. I'm going to come back to you in a second. So right now, just like call it like a little intervention time. Get you in a little water. Check back with me in a second. But these right here are two fruit beast. Okay? They're coming real soon. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And we're going to come right back in just a minute, man. But I'm telling you right now, brother, this right here is a, it's going to be Clash of the Titans. Fruit style. So I get back with it. We're going to set this thing up in just a second. But, brother, I cannot wait to try those particular spirits, man. It's bomb. So I'll switch it out. We'll be back to you in one second. Y'all. So now whew, it's time, y'all. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've really been uh, waiting and wanting to do this head to head for some time now. Uh, I would probably say maybe the last two months. I've been salivating and been wanting to see which between these two are is the better one. And for me, I'm, well, today we're going to get those answers. Me and you, we, we are going to get these answers. But I know specifically for the last two months, two or three months, I've been having at least, it's been a handful of uh, people that have been hitting me up in my comment block asking drams, drams, when we going to get the RB27? When we going to get the red breast? So, here it is, man. I, and the thing about this, I really love the bottle. I was kind of like a, a nice, sleek, like a dark maroonish color. And uh, the bottle was very, very nice. I like it. It looks sophisticated, so to speak. The color is different, and I just enjoy it. It kind of looks like almost licorice-like. So it, it has a just a very different aspect to it. I think it kind of coordinates with the box. The box is very hard. It got hinges on it. Um, just pretty much said red breast 27. Um, this right here is what you call like a Irish. Uh, uh, I think it's pretty much elite Irish whiskey. What we're looking at. This is what it comes in. It has a magnetic top. So you have to, in order to get it open, you have to slide this out. It's magnetic and it, you put the bottle in there. Then this comes in, you just put it right here and just slides right in like that and locks the box, uh, the bottle in the center right here, but nice sturdy box. I love it. Um, but yeah, this one right here, Red Breast 27. So what I read, this is a mixture of different whiskeys uh, from X bourbon uh, uh, cast. And it's ranged from 13 to 26 years. And that range of uh, different whiskeys, they mixed together with, it has some X bourbon influence. And then they uh, uh, put it in different uh, barrels. So they put it in the obviously sherry cast, all the sherry cast. And then they also put it uh, for a short time in uh, support cast, port pipes. And those port wine is very, very sweet, and that's where it picks up a lot of that that deep, 
fruited like that that candy that fresh fruit it's just like almost it's like a fruit basket like um if you ever seen my review of the glendronic uh port with uh, uh 10 year i believe it was i did how i said that was a fruit beast if you ever had a port wood, uh, if you ever had that Glendronic port wood, if you if you had that before, just imagine it on steroids times two. That's what these two are. It's just it takes it to another level and it's a higher ABV, so it just really enhances it and takes it to another level. And then we have this right here, the Dare Garlic uh, Knockrath by Middleton. This one right here is another Irish whiskey uh, heavy hitter. Middleton, uh, they do Barry Crockett. They do uh, a multitude of different spirits. Um, they they get busy. They Middleton is legit in the in the whiskey game, not just Irish, but in general. So if you never had a Middleton product, they are legit. You know, you could think of them how is uh, Macallan or Balvini or Glenjonic, how those are heavy hitters in the Scotch realm. Well, these two are the same way in the Irish realm, but I will say, like I said, good whiskey is good whiskey, in regards to where it comes from. So this is it. And just so you know, this is a virgin oak, and this is, I don't know if you can pick it up with the light, but it is tree number six. So this particular expression is very, uh, has a nice little uh, story to it. So these are uh, uh, ex-bourbon uh, barrels as well, and the, it's, it's Ireland. It's actually the knockrath is the, is the forest. They have different trees in that forest. Those trees, they cut down and they make it into the, uh, the wine, like the, pretty much the barrel. So barrels made of native Irish wood cut from a tree. They made it to a barrel and they put the, a multitude of different ex-bourbon whiskeys aged. And this is a uh, native. Oh, that's why it has, a, it says right here, uh, tree number six. So they have, uh, there's seven different uh, tree numbers that, they, that this comes in. So this, this dark garlic, if you find it, it's going to say uh, virgin Irish oak. So this is vir virgin Irish oak and they have seven different trees. Those seven trees have some similarities and they have well, a lot of similarities and they have a, some slight differences. I believe uh, tree number five was the one that sticks out a little bit uh, more from what I've heard. It tastes more like a uh, like a cognac influenced one. But um, this one right here, I have tree number six. Like I said, made from real trees in the Irish forest that they uh, actually they different mix a two of different uh, ex bourbon barrels and they put it in, in a true native Irish um, wood. And uh, Virgin Oak is slightly becoming one of my most favorite, uh, I would say, uh, oak cast types for whiskey. Because it, it just has a very flush, fruity flavor. And I just enjoy that. I mean, I love Virgin Oak. And this is done right. And similar to this box, how this box is very thick. This box is just as thick. Um, it has a little pamphlet, uh, talks about, you know, those, those different things I was referring to, these trees. So if you look in here, it opens it up. It talks, it has a picture of a tree. I'll open it up for you just, little, just to show you. So it just has a different thing. How I said it came from a tree. Uh, it talks deeply about the trees. I'm not going to read all that stuff, but just let you know, it actually comes from real trees. This is true Irish whiskey at its best on the inside. It has like a little birds. And I really love the artistry on the inside of the box. So much so that when I eventually do kill this box, I don't know if, I don't think I, I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna just discard it. I think I'll keep it around. Uh, I definitely, I just enjoy it. It's very nice. There's no, there's no magnetic top to it or anything like that, but just nice and just nice artistry. Nice thick thickness to it. Really nice, well crafted, nice made. But yeah. So again, we have two heavy hitters. This one, I actually got this from my man, Ryan, at uh, Texas Wines and uh, Carlsbad. He actually sells this for $600. I think the retail for this is $500, and he sells it, obviously, the second market price for $600. Um, because I do business with him, he knows me, he hooked me up, he gave me a nice uh, price. So, actually, I only end up paying out the door $450, tax-free, <laughs> out the door for this particular rep breast. And he hooked me up, so uh, I was I was happy he hooked me up, and I got it because I wouldn't have bought it at, at, at the price they were selling it. So, um, so I was happy to get it. I was like, man, for four fifty out the door, I don't think I can I can beat that price. Uh, it'd be hard to at least. So um, I jumped on it and I got it. And this one right here, I got this from a local store around here. Um, this one I paid. Uh, well, I wouldn't say local. It was a little bit further north. It was about maybe forty miles north here. 
Uh, they sell it at the store. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but anyway, they sell this that particular Middleton uh, Dare Garlic. Uh, I'm, I'm probably chewing the word up a little bit, so forgive me. Uh, that's what I like to call it. Um, I, I paid three fifty for that one. So this was three fifty, and this was four fifty. But keep in mind, this normally is a little bit more expensive than that. So you can say I can say this ranges anywhere from four fifty to six hundred dollars. This normally tops out around three fifty. The cheapest I've ever seen the Middleton. Uh, Dare garlic. Uh, I seen it. I remember uh, last month I was in Houston and they have a uh, pretty much a regional store called Specs S P E C, and they had it there in Houston. There I saw it was a different tree number. I want to say it was tree number two or three. I don't remember which one, but anyway, it was for two seventy eight, if I believe it correctly. So it was a, it pretty much uh, with taxes, it's probably much going to run you about three hundred dollars. So out the door in Texas, I can you could probably get this for about three hundred. Um, so I bought it for three fifty here. So it, it ranges, but normally the cheapest you're going to see is usually around 275 and it, it can go all the way up to 350 or a little bit more. Uh, but I will say these are both rare. You don't see neither one of them that often. You don't see red. I mean, Redbreast is a very known uh, brand and it's very common, but 27 year, this edition is not very common. And like I said, these are both, you know, 300, 300 and up dollar bottles. So these are something that you don't drink every day. You don't see every day. And if you see either one of these, after this review, you I think hopefully it'll give you a more insight of something that you might want to invest in for you know a special occasion just to keep for yourself or or maybe not invest in. Uh, you you'll make that choice. But my my job is to just present the information. And hopefully you can take something out of it, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, but yeah, so I had them for some time. So like I said, these are Irish whiskey uh, heavy hitters, and I cannot wait to dig into it. So I'm gonna start with the Red Breast 27 Year. Again, we have X bourbon we have all the Russell Sherry, and we have Fort Pipes, all married together, 27 years. And like I said, man, it's, whew, I'm ready. I am ready. Let's do what we came here to do. And I'll let you look at it real quick. It's, it's a light amber color, very light. Uh, almost looks like a like a, a tenth of, a, of an apple juice, but maybe a little slightly darker. I don't see a lot of legs coming down, so um, got a lot of fingerprints on the glass now. But anyway... Uh, nice, uh, nice consistency, nice color. It, you know, we're looking at it, it doesn't look like 27 years. I'm not saying that uh, all 27 years are dark, but yeah, I would never know or think that it would be 27 years. But that being said, let's jump on this nose and let's see what we got. Wow. So right now, Right off the bat, I'm picking up strong, heavy fruit influences right now. Smells like some pears, pineapples, strawberries, like a melon. Oh man, when I say it's a fruit beast, it is a fruit beast. I mean, it's just all in the nose. I, it, it smells like some Capri Sun. Like you ever smell Capri Sun for your kids, or when you was when you was going to middle school, or whatever you Capri Sun. It smells like that. That's what it smells like. This more like a fruit basket. Like I said, melon, strawberries, pears. Uh, very nice. And it's still it's fifty. It's fifty five percent. Is it? Uh, yeah. So it's fifty. Well, just the tab to fifty five percent alcohol. So it definitely is. It's cash strength has a punch to it, but. Uh, so you still pick up a little bit of alcohol on the nose. But even then, like I said, you still pick up a lot of fruit influence on here. <sighs> yes. So just imagine a fruit salad on the nose. That's what I'm picking up. You don't pick up any smoke, no oak, you know, no no kind of, uh, you know, uh, I'm not picking up much like uh, vanilla or anything like that. Primarily all fruits is what I smell, straight fruits. Like I said, uh, pineapples. Pears, melons, all in the nose. <sighs> all right, without further ado, let's go palate. That first sip always sensitizes the palate. A little tingly sensation. I'm gonna let it roll out. 
And I'm gonna pick another sip to saturate that palate just a little bit more so I can really dig into them flavors just for y'all. Mm. I wish I was sipping with y'all. I wish y'all could enjoy this as well. But if you're not already, pull out your drink and sip with me. This is right here. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a pleasure. Let me take one more sip. I'm gonna dive right into these notes. Give me one, just one second. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wow. I smell like it tastes like a very, very sophisticated stewed fruits. I get a lot of I get some papaya, some pineapple. Man, it's just it is very fruit. Now it is I'm just amazed at how much fruit is on this damn thing. Melons, papaya. Pineapples, strawberries, apples, all up on it. Just like I said, just imagine a Capri Sun and an alcohol version. That's what we picking up right here. Very fruit influenced. So you you know I don't. It's just like a stew, like a stewed fruit. You get to all those all up on your on your palate. It's literally dancing on my tongue with fruit. That's just I mean that's just what it is. And you know you're not gonna pick up any smoke. Um, there's no, I don't pick up any sherry factor or anything like that. Uh, not, not too much sherry factor, even though it is sherry cast, but I pick up just mainly all fruits on here. That wine influence, it, it is, it is very good. It's sweet. I will say this, the sweetness, you know, there's different types of sweetness. There's like, uh, sugar sweetness, cinnamon sweetness. This is fruit sweetness. There is a little bit of, uh, the honey on here as well. A little bit of vanilla you pick up along with those fruits. But just imagine those fruits I just named, the pineapple, guava, strawberry, apples, stewed, like the stewed fruit uh, kind of uh, taste. And you add a little bit of vanilla in there, like you get like a fruit basket type of, of, of a smell and a taste is what I pick up on here. It is it is a very, very fruit influence. So if you guy or gal who likes smoke and oak, you're not going to pick it up on, on neither one of these. So if you're a peat head. Stay away from both of these. These is the the total opposite of what that of what those are. So you know, all, you know. But me, I have a very diverse palate. I like peat, I like sweet, and things in between. So, uh, but yeah, these are all fruits. So there ain't gonna be no smoke at all on here. Just heavy on the fruit. Like I said, melons, guava. You get the pineapple, uh, apples, strawberries, all on the palate. Vanilla. This is wonderful dram, man. Wonderful dram. And this is 27 years, so it, it, it doesn't, for 27 years, you would think, at least I would think that I would pick up more of a, uh, I would say, I'm going to put this a drop of water, I would pick up more oak and you don't, you know. You wouldn't play them up out of it. But yeah, 27 years is not super oaky. I've had, I remember one time I had ordered a sample at the time of Master Moth, which they don't uh, sell it to the uh, U.S. no more. I ordered a sample of the Balvany. 30 year and that member when I tried it I was like man this is just super oaky for me I mean I, I like oak but to me it was just a little too uh, oak heavy for my personal taste per se so when I had tried it 27 years uh, before I tried it I initially, initially thought that I would get more oak on there and I'm not really picking up any on there it is just all fruit vanilla honey and it's it's just a fruit basket of assorted flavors that's what you pick up. Uh, the oak it, it on, it's not on here at all. So uh, that being said, man, it's just a, a bomb dram. I pour just a, sit a little bit of water in here. I'm gonna take this last sip to see if that water does anything. <sighs> man. Yeah, I, like I said, I've been waiting all week for this. So, whew, I'm so excited. All right, let's take this last sip. Damn, a little bit, a little bit of water 
seems it brings the fruit flavor out more. It seems it makes it a tad bit sweeter. And I'm picking up heavy melon now on this one. Like a sweet cantaloupe, strawberries and pineapple. That's what I'm picking up on that water. I just turned up a notch with that with that water. Man, like I said, those of you who are fruit uh, fans of whiskey, you would definitely, if you ever uh, try this, you would definitely be in your wheelhouse. Uh, I don't know of too many spots that you can order a shot of Red Breast 27. You don't, you're not really going to find it really on any restaurant. I go to a lot of high-end steakhouses, and I've never seen Red Breast 27 ever. So it's one of those things that, you know, you might have to go to a specific uh, whiskey house. You know, orders, you know, that you order at a whiskey house, at a whiskey bar. Like, they have, like, a large uh, supply of it. I think it was a guy that, uh, at one of the spec stores in Texas told me he ordered a, a shot of this. I want to say he, he said he paid around 45 50 bucks, maybe, somewhere in that ballpark. So... Um, for a five hundred dollar bottle, I think if you break it down, um, that's not a bad price. Cause I've seen on, on a couple menus at a couple steakhouses, believe it or not, right here they was charging forty dollars for some damn uh, Johnny Walker Blue Label, and that's only like a two hundred dollar bottle. And so you know, so you if you're gonna tax someone forty fifty dollars for a two hundred dollar bottle, if you're gonna pay the same price for a five hundred dollar bottle, I think. In that particular realm, I think that was, you know, relatively priced. But keep in mind, that's in Texas. So, California, I uh, don't expect those kind of prices. That being said, Red Breast 27 is a winner. It is a fruit beast to the highest beastality. I'm making up words, but it is in there. Uh, so, like I said, is it worth it? Man, you know, that, and I, that's a tough call. Do I think it's worth $500? That's all subjective, man. But I can't tell you what your money is worth. I would say this. If you are a collector, a reviewer, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, those are people, if you collect and review spirits, um, I think that it, it's a worthy uh, investment to get it. And if you just it's an added fan of good spirits, you can find things that uh, are fruit influenced that don't cost $500. So do I think it's worth $500? Honestly, no, I don't think it's worth $500. I love it. I enjoy it, but it's hard for me to justify five hundred dollars. That being said, I'm glad I got it. I'm glad I'm reviewed it, shared it with you. Uh, would I buy another bottle of Red Breast Twenty Seven? And I love it. I really do. But no, I would not see myself buying another one. Even though I got it for four fifty, which is a, a pretty much at the base of, of what it is sold for, which is pretty much retail price. I, mean, I, I don't think that I would do that again. No. I mean, to me, it, it you know. I just need, it's, it's very hard. I don't think I've ever had anything that I would say is worth $500. Maybe uh, maybe close, but I, I I can't say I had something I'll say, yo, it's $500 worth. Anyway, so what would I rate this then? You would say, well, Drams, is, is, what, what would you rate this? So for me, rating the Red Breast 27 from 1 to 10, 10 being the best for me, Drams. Uh, I love this, man. I really do. But I, I would give this, man, keep in mind, this, this is a fruit monster, so... I will give this a solid nine, a nine out of a ten all day long. Solid nine on taste. And I mean, only thing I only thing I can knock it on is just that outside of fruit is not as complex outside of fruit. So it's complex. If you if we're just talking about fruit, it's very complex because you get multitude of different fruits in there. But I mean, you don't you know not that it has to, but you don't pick up uh, you know really any um, uh, uh, peat or smoke or anything of that nature. Um, you don't pick up any cognac influence or, or anything or, or even oak. So um, I think it's it's kind of in this wheelhouse of, of, of fruit, and which is awesome. Um, that's the one thing I would really gig it on. I will say, but it's it's just, I mean, look, it's fifty six, well, pretty much 50, 55, 56 percent. There's no burn, no bite. It's in there. Like I said, it is a fruit monster. Um, I wish it was a little bit more viscous uh, for me. It is it's uh, it definitely lingers because of the ABV, but the viscosity is not as thick as, as maybe some other drinks I've had. Um, so that's something I can really knock it on. It lingers. Uh, the ABV is nice. It's smooth. Um, so, like I said, I will give this a solid 9 out of a 10 all day long. Solid 9. All day. Um, so, and, you know, for me, I, I would have to take it down to a, you know, it, it, to be honest with you, I, I have to take it down. I hate to do this, but I have to take it down to an 8 all around because, I, you know, as me. Taste alone is solid nine out of a ten. I mean, it's an eight. It's a solid eight. Okay, so nine out of a ten is an eight. 
but I have to take it down to a full point because of price and availability. You ain't gonna find it everywhere. You might you do some you have to do some hunting and some looking for it because you're not gonna see it very often. And when you do, I already told you what the price is. So I think A, the availability is, is limited, obviously limited release, and B, I think it's overpriced. I, I mean it's awesome dram. It is very awesome. If you if you are a fruit person, you might even give it above a nine. I mean, I am a fruit person, don't get me wrong, but uh that's that's my that's my take on it. I get a solid, it's an eight, eight minus, nine out of a ten all day long. Um, but I, I wouldn't buy another uh, bottle at it of it. If this was like maybe two hundred dollars, I would definitely get it again. But for well, like I say, I, I got a, I got a hookup. He was some people sell for well over five hundred dollars. So if you tell me eight hey, drams, I get you another bottle for five fifteen or five twenty. Negative, you can keep it. I love it, but it ain't it ain't it ain't no five hundred dollar bottle. Me, it's just not. So because of price and availability, all around, I'm gonna knock it to an eight out of a ten. But uh, so we're just talking taste, nine out of a 10. All around price availability, the whole shebang out the door, eight out of a 10 for me. Uh, so solid round, um, overpriced, limited. Um, but like I said, I mean, I don't think I've really had anybody I can literally say is worth $500. Maybe the best one I've had to date, I can, well, among one of the best I've had to date was, there's a few of them, but just to name one or two, uh, was, you know, obviously the, uh, Octomore 10.3, and, I, and I, I, I'm a huge fan of the uh, Glendronic 18. But anyway, back to this. Um, this one right here, um, solid dram. So I would say try a pour at a friend's house. If, they, if you forgot some friends that got this, go to their house or come, you know, if you're a subscriber or a supporter, if you're in an area, hit me up. You know, we'll talk politics um, or maybe go to a bar. But yeah, uh, 9 out of a 10 on taste, 8 out of a 10 all around. That being said, I'm going to Go ahead, cleanse my palate real quick. I'm gonna jump on this mineral tin. That's some good water too. Very good water. The water is good. But man, now this one right here, as I said earlier, the six, no, actually, uh, was it seven different trees. So I got tree number six. This is made from actual trees in a forest. That over a hundred year old trees. They cut the trees, they, they use the wood from the trees to age the uh, the uh, different uh, ex bourbon uh, whiskey that they have in this in the native Irish oak, and then, like I said, there's different ranges of, of the whiskey. So age range, the ranges they say from 13 to 26 years. So this one right here is very unique. Like I said, you're getting just that good Irish uh, virgin oak, and this is just man, this is another sweet one right here. Color on it, same as the the uh, is the other one is the red breast is very kind of uh, like a medium amber color. I don't see a lot of viscosity. I don't see a lot of legs. Not, it doesn't look very oily at all. But I can smell the fruit from here. On the nose, I'm picking up a lot of fruit influences. It's just the same. I'm picking up a little bit more alcohol, just a little bit. Pick up with some plums, peaches, maybe some apples. I pick up a little bit of vanilla too. Vanilla, plums, peaches, apples. I pick up alcohol as well. So this one right here is bottled at. Uh, it's 113 proof, 56.6% alcohol. So it's like a little bit of maybe one percent or so higher of uh, than the. Uh, the RB27. So uh, similar color, uh, has some similarities in those that you pick up fruit influences on that, as I said. Uh, vanilla, plums, pears, apples. Like I said, viscosity, I'm not really seeing no legs coming down. So yeah, not super oily. Yeah. That being said, let's go palette. Let's see what we got. First step, get a palate all tingly. I'm gonna subside for a quick second. I'm gonna jump right back on this one again. A second sip, gonna do it. Hmm. 
One more sip. I'm going to dab right to the notes. I tell you, man, you'd be surprised how similar in taste these are. This one right here, I'm picking up very similar fruit basket notes. I say fruit basket because it's an assortment of different fruits. I'm picking up similar to the nose, some plums. I pick up grapes now, grapes on the palate, plums, grapes, apples. And I pick up just a lot of uh, vanilla and honey on this too. Sweetness. I mean, it's, it's amazing how close like how close these are as far as taste. I think they, they differ. They, I mean, I've said maybe I taste more strawberry or pineapple on this one. This more plums and pears or whatever case on this one. But the fruits may be di sort of different, but you still pick up high fruit. ABVs there. Neither one of them are super oily or viscous. Um, so, it, I mean, they almost taste not identical, but I mean, extremely like you, they almost taste like brothers. You know what I'm saying? There's not a vast, drastic difference in these. I, in the first two sips, I'm being honest with you, not. On the major difference I pick up is just a sort of, like I said, this one is more melon and strawberry pineapple. This one pears. That being said, what I'm talking about, let me pour a little bit of water in here as well. So, so I'm going to see if that enhances it anyway. But, uh, this is basically this is a different fruit, slightly different fruits. Uh, they, I both I taste apples with both of them, um, so they have that in common. And but uh, primarily it's just a, just a different uh, flavor of fruit. But everything else, as far as vanilla and honey, you don't pick up any oak, any smoke on either one of them. The ABVs are pretty much dead on. So it is very similar. It really is. They both are fruit beasts, just like I said. I mean, if you want fruit dancing on your tongue. Both of these will fit the bill. Both of them will. I don't think you'll be disappointed either way. If you are a fruit person, the sweetness is your thing. You will not be disappointed either way with either one of these drams. They both are solid. They get busy and they fit the bill. So uh, I think you can go either way. That being said, I've had a little, just a little bit of water in here. I'm going to take this last sip. I'm going to uh, score it for you. Okay. Okay. Wow. We got that down. The water didn't change it too much. It really didn't. But, um, whew. I, I've been drinking a lot of this cash train. It's kind of all right now. It's starting to feel a little bit. But anyway, that being said, the Milton Dark Garlic Knockraft Tree Number Six is a wrap. Now, again, I said I paid uh, $350 for that. Um, this one right here, 9 8 Statement, Virgin Oak, Fruit Beast. You pick up pear, plums, apples. I mean, it's just, there's no, I don't pick up any melon on this, but it's just players, plums, those type, those fruits right there. And it's the vanilla with the honey. I mean, it is very, very fruity as well. Now, you say, which one is fruitier? They both are almost spot on. I would say out of zero to 10, 10 being the fruitiest, I would say this is probably, I mean, out of, I'm only talking about fruit right here. This is probably a 9.5 out of 10 on fruit factor. This is just straight fruit. This would probably be, I would give this, uh, this is nine and a half out of a 10. This is probably a nine out of a 10. So I would say the red breast 27 slightly, I pick up slightly more fruit on the uh, fruit uh, enhancement on the 27 year than I do on, on the Melton. But they're still pretty dead, well, they're pretty much dead on. So, um, for the Middleton Dare Garlic Knock Raft Tree number six, zero 10, 10 being the best for me, Dram's on deck. Uh, on taste alone, um, I would give the, the Middleton, uh, I, I, it is very good. I would give this a, a solid eight, 
which is eight and three quarters. So just a tad under nine is what I would give the Middleton. And uh, it, I mean, they're both bottom dramas, man. Uh, so taste factor, they're almost spot on. I will say for me, uh, the Red Breast 27, I, I find it to be slightly more fruitier. Um, so I would give it a slight edge and that, I mean, it could go, it's, it's, it's pretty much, I'm being, uh, uh, like, like really, really, you know, I, you have to be sometimes like really, really teased and picky, but, uh, I would say the red breast has slightly more enhanced fruit, at least on my palate, lingers a little bit more for me, um, slightly, very slightly. So you can go either way. Um, so I give this an 8.75 for the, um, for the Milton. Uh, it's, it's, it's in there. It's a bomb dram. It's damn near a nine. Um, so I will say that price availability is pretty much uh, on the same. I, instead of have, knocking down a, a whole point, I'd knock it down only a, a half a point to a eight, eight, and a, uh, eight and a quarter. The reason why I, I knock it down to eight and a quarter is because only on the, I mean, it's limited. Obviously, it's made from natural trees. So certain things are going to be a limited quantity. These both are that. I will say that the price point is still a little slightly uh, cheaper. You can, you can save anywhere from like 150 This is about $150, maybe even 200 depending on where you get it from, uh, cheaper than the Red Breast 27. So for the, the taste profiles are pretty much neck and neck almost. I give a slight edge to the Red Breast 27, but the Red Breast is going to cost you, like I said, anywhere $150, $200 more. So because I knocked it down a full point, I'm only not going to knock this down a half a point because... They're both going to be limited in availability, but the price point is a little bit slightly, is more doable for the Middleton. So because of that, I'm going to knock it down to half a point. So all around, the Middleton is an eight and a quarter, 8.25, and I would not, and this all around is a eight. So like I said, even though I said the taste is slightly better, I knock it down to four point because it costs a lot more. This is $500 bottle or more. That's excessive. So to me, if I, if you were me, and you're in the store, and you have the Middleton Dark Garlic, and you have the Red Rush 27. For me, if I was gonna pick one, I would pick the Middleton because only because it's cheaper. That's, that's the only reason why it's cheaper. If the price was the same, I would go with the Red Rush 27. But because it's a hundred fifty, two hundred dollar difference, trust me, go with this. You, if you want the Red Rush 27, and you don't want to spend five hundred dollars. If you can, go, you probably have to go online to get this. So you're not, you're not gonna, like I said, you're not gonna see this every store. So you might have to take yourself online and get this Milton. But this is a very uh, keen substitute. Uh, this is a very uh, suitable substitute for the red breast. It's around $150 to $200 cheaper. So if I were you and you want something of, of that fruity nature and you don't want to spend $500, go this route. You would not be disappointed. And I think any of the trees, if you get any, and they're all fruity. So if you, in one through seven, any of them you get, I will go with those over the red breast because the, only because of the price. Uh, I think the red breast is slightly uh, more influenced on the fruit, though. So all in all, bomb drams on taste alone nine eight seven five. Overall eight and a quarter eight. But either way, I would say if you get the opportunity to try these, please do so and form your own opinion. Hit me my in my comment block. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, let me know what you, if you have had it or any of the questions, uh, I will respond to you. Just let me know. But man, all in all, my 100th video, I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm blessed. Thank you all for tuning in with me, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe button. Likes and subscribes is free. And also, in, I'll be sure, as I said earlier, uh, if you will skim through it, I'll timestamp this particular video because it's kind of long and you can just get to the meat and potatoes, no taste score, have you, so that way you can just get to the little nuggets to be on your way. Also, I have a Cash App Patreon if you would help support the channel. Um, like I said, you know, if you feel like I earned it, if you choose to, either way, it's totally, I don't push it much, it's totally up to you if you want to do that. I really appreciate the, any support. But man, I'm telling you, this was a fun day. 100 a review. I never thought I'd be doing a 100 review. This is just something I started off as for fun just to see where it goes. And just now here I am, you know, uh, doing it, man. I just, I just really enjoy it, man. So thank y'all. I'm grateful for y'all tuning in with me, sharing y'all thoughts as well. Really, greatly appreciate it. And uh, man, I got a lot more reviews on the way. So thank y'all all. Signing off. Drams on deck. Now.